What's up, my pilots? Anger Poncho here, and we're back playing Minecraft with Redstone. In this episode, yes, that's right, you heard correctly last time around, we're going to tackle one of the most difficult tasks in Minecraft. Counting. Oh yes, it's crazy. Alright, so, in this episode, we're going to build, or I'm going to sh talk about how I've built here, a uh, binary counter. Again, this is a design I've borrowed, and this is actually a good time for me to bring up this point about uh, originality of ideas in Minecraft. Basically, very few things that you see built in my world here is stuff that I came up with. Uh, I mean, all the in-house demos are d stuff that I've designed myself, but they're clearly denoted with just AP on the bottom of the sign. And I sort of, I don't really feel uh, the need to uh, give everybody credit for everything because it's really not, uh, it doesn't really make sense to think of redstone devices in that way. Because it's not like the first person who invented a bud switch, you know, deserves a thank you and every time somebody uses a bud switch, you know, there's no royalties, none of that nonsense. You know, they had a good idea and now people are benefiting from it. You know, if they need more than that, they should have patented it or something. But guess what? You can't patent shit in Minecraft. You know, it's just a game. So, if you're seeing, like, you know, somebody uses a... a now, I can understand how uh, someone might get uh, upset if another user were claiming to have invented something that they invented, because they just sort of wanted the, the credit for the idea. But, uh, I'm making that... I'm never making that claim in this world. Anything that is built in here that doesn't have an AP on the sign, you can assume I got from a YouTube video or from the wiki. Uh, all this stuff is out there, it's, you just have to go find it. So again, I, uh, I invented very few of the things here in this world, and the ones that I did invent, I have put the AP on them, so you can identify which ones are originals, so you don't go looking for them online. But yeah, so this binary counter is, of course, a design I found online, and like everything else, I'm not going to say who invented it, because it really doesn't matter. Honestly, because even when you find something online, you find a video showing you how to make something, uh, the, that guy probably got it from somewhere else in the first place, so there's no point in even seeing where you found it. Alright, so basically, in order to be able to use this binary counter, you have to know how to count in binary. And the way that, that works is, uh, in order to read the output here, you just add up uh, the numbers on the signs below the lit torches. So. I'll give a demonstration. The way that this device works, you uh, first we reset to zero. It already was off at zero. And now, this button is your one-up button. Every time you push it, the output goes up by one. So here, this output now, everything's off, so it's all zeros except for a one here. And that means we add, so we add one. So this is outputting a one. And now when I push it again, This one turns off, and this one turns on. Okay, so now it's outputting two. That makes sense. So we add up all the lit torches, and it's just the, it's just the two. But now when I go to three, two and one are on, which means the output is one plus two is three. So we've just gone from zero to one to two to three. So you see it's actually counting like, the, like you'd expect. Push it again. These are going to turn off and 4 turns on, so now it's outputting 4. Push it again. 4 and 1 is 5. 4 and 2 is 6. 4, 2, and 1 is 7. And now the fourth one down there is going to turn on because the sign under it is 8. See? All these signs have the powers of 2 on them. That's how you read a binary number. So you've got 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s, 16s. So just like in, in a number in... Uh, if this were a decimal number, the, the first zero on the right would be the 1s place, and then next to it is the 10s place, and then the 100s place, and the 1000s place. So that's why you know this number is 1000, because it has a 1 in the 1000s place, and a 0 everywhere else. If I were to write it like this, it would be 1000th, uh, zero hundreds, four tens, and a five. So you're doing it in, in decimal too, but you're just adding up powers of ten instead of powers of two. So here we have 
a 1's place, a 2's place, a 4's place, an 8's place, a 16's place, and so the pattern continues like that. This device, the, as far as I've built it, so up to here, the highest place is the 128th, 128th's place. So it's it, the highest number it can count to right now is uh, 255, uh, and it can do, and it can do zero. So it actually has 256 numbers that it knows. I'm gonna go ahead and reset to zero and show you what else this can do. Uh, I, have a, I have a clock input over here, where when you turn this on, you throw this lever, uh, it's starting a cycle back there, uh, starting a clock. So when you push this button, it's going to just keep counting, and pretty quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and you see it's working. So I, you could stand here and just watch this all day. It's going to take a while for it to get to these high numbers. I mean, obviously, it has to count to 128 before this one turns on. There you go. It just got to 32, and it's still going. So what is happening back here? Uh, so there's a few things happening here. I'm just going to let it keep... Uh, you know, actually, that's kind of loud. I'll show you it working in a minute, but to turn it off, you just unclick that, and I'm going to go ahead and clear the output, too. Okay. So here's what's happening back here. I'll first show you what the plus one button does. So we've got here... Mm, well, okay. We'll start... <laughs> it's hard to figure out where to start, because you see this and you're like, crap, that's a lot of redstone back there, just to count. But it's actually fairly fairly compact. It's a decent counter. I like the, house, how the, I like the size. It was, it was easy to build all this by hand. That's another thing I should make a note of, is that Everything you see in my my redstone world I'm building here, uh, I've done by hand. I don't use any world editing except for uh, replacing huge patches of the missing ground with grass. <laughs> I did that with a command. But everything else I build by hand. All the redstone devices I put together. No copy pasting, none of that. Because, you know, you really don't understand it unless you're building it yourself. And if you only build it one time and then just copy paste it, you're really not understanding what's going on. And so just for my sake as sort of uh, in order to under, better understand what I'm building, I do it all by hand. So, here's what's happening here. We have a bunch of these uh, toggles, which are basically, like I said, a DMUX and an RS NOR latch. So, the latch uh, allows us to remember whether a number is on or on, on or, <laughs> on or on, on or off on the output. So, that's why these torches have stable uh, states. Uh, the, the latch is remembering whether this should be on or off. And then the DMUX is choosing, uh, here's the input line, the DMUX is choosing where this input line goes. Either it goes into this latch, which uh, would mean it turns it on, turns the, turns the torch on, or it goes right through, because when this first one is already on, I'll go ahead and push this button, so that turns it on, so now the counter is displaying the number 1, when one of these is on, the input signal goes right through. As I was saying, when this number is on, so when the 1 is being displayed, the, the piston moves this block out of the way, which allows the, the redstone dust to go right through the middle here, right through, ah, onto the next one, turning it on. But it also has the ripple effect of whenever a number turns on, that means that every every latch before it was already on, and in order to count properly in binary, they all need to be turned off at that point, all the ones before the highest latch. So that actually happens. So when this signal comes in through here, and it goes to, say, turn on 2, we don't want to count straight from 1 to 3, so when 2 turns on, 1 needs to turn off so that the output adds up to 2, and sure enough does. So we turn on 2, and then the signal over here comes around, it actually goes on top of this block, and then down, and then to here, and deactivates this latch. So, when I get another input pulse, what's going to happen is, it's going to come around through here, I'll explain that thing in a minute, uh, it's going to turn this one off, because it loops around here and turns it off, but firstly, it goes through it, and turns the next one it runs into on. So I'll go ahead and... Sure enough, worked. Turned off this one, turned on that one. Okay, now let me show you the reset line. It's basically just this red line here. It runs underneath all the output lines, a couple of repeaters to keep it going. 
uh, and it just sends power to the to the uh, reset part of the latches, which just means that it turns all the latches off so that the output display out here the display is cleared. Okay, so this components that we have back here, uh, besides this long string of toggles, uh, which has the effect of counting in binary because you know whenever one of them is a zero, it turns itself on. Whenever it's on, it passes it through and turns the next one on, turning itself off, which is exactly the behavior of, of binary counting as you continue down the line. Uh, yeah, it's okay. So I know those, those are the toggles. And then the output here is just taking the signal from this torch and powering it through to the wall, which uh, powers or depowers these torches here. So it's actually opposite on the back. We're actually taking it from the from the um, output the <laughs> the negation of the output because we want it to be powered to turn off the torch so it's actually just getting flipped over it. That's sort of a not gate implicitly with this torch but it's fine. The design is intended to work that way. So here the green wool, this is the plus one button coming from the pink here. Now I told you guys in the last video that these toggles are are sensitive babies they need a tender love and touch, uh, which means they only respond to one tick long inputs. This little green circuit just takes a longer input and turns it into a one tick long input. And the way that works is, with just a little bit of messing around with repeaters, I was able to get the signal to only last for one tick uh, by the following method. Power comes in through here, and immediately it gets, it gets a one tick delay, and then it just gets passed through. But now, uh, I want this uh, piston to activate to block the signal from going through this line. Because uh, basically I want this to turn itself off and have the signal not be able to go through for too long. And so I have a delay built in over here until the, the piston turns on. So basically, by the time the output is ready to go out the other side here, it, uh, it only gets one tick it only has one tick left uh, before the piston gets put in the way so it can actually go through. So if you watch... Yeah, I actually think that this dust down here is optional. That's, that's, that's misleading. You don't need that. So the, the piston uh, takes so long to get in front of this repeater that this repeater has only one tick left before it turns off. And that's just because of how long the button stays on. And so you see it sends a one tick pulse through here which sends it through to the to the toggles so that they work correctly. Okay, so now the clock input. This is the clock here, that's why it's in white. I'm going to try and be consistent about these color codes so you guys can identify stuff by sight. White's always going to be clocks. Clocks and controls. So firstly I have the clock lever out here, which comes into an AND gate. Uh, so this clock won't run unless both of these AND inputs are on. Which basically means you have to have this lever thrown in order for the clock to start. Because whenever you push this button and you get the plus one, it not only sends it to the circuit, it also sends it this way and sends a pulse to the clock. So this pulse comes around here, just one tick long. Actually, it's a couple ticks long because it turns this on and then this takes uh, three ticks to turn off. So because it's on set to, it's set, to, it's set to three. So you actually get a three tick pulse coming to this torch, which is long enough for it to turn it off and turn the other one that, um, move down here on and pass the signal through properly. So I'll try and demonstrate what's going on here. So when the clock is on, or activated, this line runs around here and turns off the first torch. And then the pulse from over here comes around and turns off the second torch, allowing the AND gate to say, oh, they're both on, my output should be on. And so it does turn on, and it comes around over here. And then once the pulse gets to here, it splits up again, Firstly, it goes down this away, over to the rest of the circuit, and secondly, it goes back through the clock. And so, as long as that lever stays on, the signal keeps looping, and every time this line blinks, it's, it, it counts up to the next number. So I'm going to go ahead and shut up for a second and just let you, show how the, let you see how this works in action. Okay, let's shut it, shut it off. Clear the display. And I'm going to try and show you real quickly that first pulse going through.
So you can see, after these first three, you have to have a repeater in order to keep the signal length going through. And then after the next ones, every three, you have to have the repeater put in. Ooh, I think we just counted all the way around, didn't we? Oh, we're getting close. Okay. So you can see this will just keep counting up. Now, uh, there's a world download in the description. And uh, if you really want to understand how this binary counter works, it's like I said, you got to build it. So I've made space here for the next two bits, which will allow you to count four times as high as it currently does. Four times as good, right? And I've also given you everything you need to build uh, just two more of what you see here. Build two more of these exactly like the ones next to them. Just put one space in and lay it down. Then go ahead and put the, the blocks up to the back of the walls here. I've already placed the signs where they need to be, so that'll help you uh, identify if you're putting the torches and stuff in the right place, and if you're powering the right blocks. And then you'll have to also extend the reset line, and you may also need to put one more repeater in once you've got three of these here. So you're going to need to put a repeater in between the two of them that you're going to build. So yeah, highly recommended that you actually try this out and try to build you know, two more of these. If you can build two of it two times, and then just go ahead and see, do they work? Does it count up uh, to 256, to 512? And uh, if you don't want to have to wait until it actually gets to 512, always wait for it to stop doing things before you reset it, because you don't want to like get some weird input. If you don't want to wait for it to get to 512, you can run down here and push these buttons, which, hello. which turns on the output out here. So you can basically skip to wherever you want to start from. So you can add up 128, 64, 32, 16, and then you only have to count a few numbers uh, before you can see whether or not your number here works. So basically, you could turn on everything and then push the pink button once, and it should turn everything off and turn the first one here on. Because that would be going from 255 to 256. So yeah, I recommend that you try and Put a, put a couple more bits in here. I've left you space, and I've given you all the supplies you need. Uh, hopefully you can just copy what's next to it, and it'll help you understand what's happening here. I've also got the signs back here, just to let you, you know, just to remind people what's, what's what back here. Pulse shortener, clock, and then all a bunch of toggles. And that is how you count in Minecraft. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit complicated, I guess. It certainly would seem complicated at first glance, but the more you work with it, the easier it gets, and it's not too hard to follow. Now here, when every when everything turns on, it goes back and starts over. So everything turns off, and then it starts counting back from zero again. So if you just leave this running, it's just going to keep counting from zero uh, to 255 over and over and over. Alright, so that is uh, pretty much what I all I wanted to show you guys uh, for this episode, because this counter is sort of a a big device and it has a lot of components in it so I figured it should get its own video to try and understand all the different pieces here. Hopefully the color coding of the wool and the sort of mirroring of everything in the same pattern makes it a little bit easier to follow, a little bit easier to understand. But uh, yeah, just try and copy a couple of these and see if you can do it exactly like what's next to it. Timing of the repeaters and all. It's all, it has to be exactly the same or it won't work properly. And uh, if you can do that then you can you can say you know how to build a binary counter, right? <laughs> Impress your friends! Alright, so uh, that's it for here for part 8. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do next, but um, I'm itching to do uh, a piston door. So I think I might do a 3x3 three three piston door in the next episode. Since it is episode 9, that would make sense. 3x3. Three three. Thanks for watching. See you guys then.